What's up? How's it going, everybody? So anyways, uh, I wanted to make a quick little video just to check in on everybody. Hope you guys are doing well. I just wrapped up my work day and uh, let me make sure the apps are turned off. Okay, we're good to go. So I wanted to make this video for those of you who are thinking about moving into your car in the new year, right? 2024 is upon us. And I've been living in my car for two years now and it's an appropriate time to make this video. It's the 28th of December, 2023. I moved into my car on the 28th of December, 2021. So it's been two years exactly to the day. And um, you may have your concerns and your doubts and you may be worried about things and that's okay. That's completely natural. You know, it's natural. You, you have these questions in your mind, these unanswered questions. You may have done your research, but nothing really is going to prepare you for this lifestyle as well as, you know, jumping into it and experiencing it for yourself. So I'm going to take it back two years ago. Um, I did a few trial runs leading up to my my uh my car life journey you know um at, at the time i was living in a house a little house in the woods and i i did a few walmart um, overnighters i did like three or four of them and the weather wasn't too cold when i was trial running it and i had a decent night's sleep i did well but even thinking back to to where i was two years ago man i've, I've just come such a long way in the in, in the past two years i've learned so much but anyways i wasn't prepared for uh what was about to come my way right so i moved into my car and i left the house that's a hell of a feeling when you pack your car and you drive away from from your apartment or your house and you look in the rearview mirror and, and you say okay i'm actually out here I'm out here on my own, right? Uh, it's just me and my wheels. And uh, that's, it's, it's, it's kind of a combination of um, nervousness, but also being very excited. It's a very exciting feeling as well. It's, it's liberating, you know, to just set sail and, and just embark on your car life journey or your van life journey or whatever it is that you're living in, right? But I wasn't prepared because it was, you know, late December, beginning of January in New England, you know, of all places. Um, uh, it wasn't a very wise time of year for me to move into my car, but that's just the way it, it, it happened. It was kind of like, I, I kind of urgently moved in, into my car. I really wanted to start my journey. I was struggling financially and I wanted to get rid of my rent, right? So I moved into my car and wouldn't you know, the first week we had an Arctic freeze rolled through Rhode Island and temperature dropped down below 15 degrees and you know it was it was really really freaking cold and I had a mattress I, I was prepared to the point where I had a mattress that was comfortable it was an inflatable mattress at the time I now have a foam mattress but it was a decent mattress right and um you know so I had a few wool blankets I had my pillows and cushions I had my winter jacket on board which I don't even use anymore and I thought that would be enough it wasn't it wasn't enough okay so for the first week I was scared shitless and I didn't get much sleep at all um, because I was freezing in the middle of the night and I would wake up and I would run the engine and jump back in there and it just wasn't working so the first week I was absolutely miserable um, and I was doubting myself to the point where I was saying, you know, Bren, what were you thinking, man? I, I don't know if I can do this. So I was even contemplating like moving down to Florida and, and, and living with my brother or with my mom for a while, but I didn't want to do that, you know? And some people ask me, Bren, why, why didn't you just drive down South? And the reason is because my son lives here in Rhode Island and I wanted to move out to my car, but I also wanted to be close to him. I wanted to be, you know, active in his life, bring him to school, bring him to, you know, practice or just see him whenever I want. So I didn't want to move down to Florida. I said, screw it. I'm going to hit the drawing board and I'm going to figure this thing out. And I went online and I, I started doing my research and I researched zero degree mummy bags, right? And I went into Dick's Sporting Goods to find one at first and I found a few, but they were really pricey, man. They were upwards of $300. I'm like, I can't afford that right now. So 
I found one on Amazon. It was a, it was a Coleman zero degree mummy bag and it was for about $89 or, or so, right? I ordered it. It came within a couple of days. And let me tell you, when it came, I was so excited. I tried it out and, you know, I put it to the test straight away. It was still very cold. It was like 15 degrees or so. Uh, the first night I got it, I jumped into my mummy bag and I knew as soon as I jumped into that mummy bag that I was going to be okay. I just had a feeling that, that I was going to be okay, but I, I still wanted to put it to the test. So I did. And I went to sleep inside my uh, mummy bag. And I think I was just wearing sweats and I, I was wearing my hoodie and I had my socks on and everything. But anyways, I went to sleep and I woke up the following morning. And guess what? I slept all the way through the night. I woke up feeling rested. I woke up feeling hopeful. I felt like I had figured out that first problem. And uh, as soon as I got that sorted out, then I just started developing the mentality of, okay, I'm gonna learn as I go. Whatever I don't figure out, you know, at first, I will, I will eventually. Then comes the summer. And I'm thinking to myself, I can make it through a cold winter. What's a hot summer going to be? No problem, right? I found out that the summer was actually harder to deal with than the winter, okay? It's easier to bundle up and stay warm. But when it's 90 degrees or 100 degrees outside and the humidity, it's like, okay, I can be butt naked back there and still be sweating, right? So I also had to figure that out. And that was before I had a mini fan on board. That was before I used ice, like ice chips or, or like ice cubes to kind of, you know, um, rub on my body to cool myself off in combination with the fan. It was before I started using my spray bottle to kind of um, cool myself off in the middle of the night. And um, I figured out those things as well, you know, how to stay cool in the summer as well. The point I'm trying to make in this video is, is that there's going to be obstacles. There's going to be things that you haven't experienced that you will have to experience for yourself in order to figure it out, right? The most important thing you want to do right now is, is keep the faith, right? Just jump out there into the wild and, and find out for yourself what you're capable of. Let me tell you something. The man I am now compared to the man I was two years ago, I am way more resilient than I was two years ago. I'm, I'm way more resourceful than I was two years ago. I'm tougher than I was two years ago, to put it short, okay? Because I was scared back then. I didn't, I, I wasn't sure of myself. Now I am sure of myself. And, um, you know, living in a car for me has become, it's home. It's just home to me, right? I can't wait to jump back here and just uh, uh, watch my Netflix and, and take these clothes off and, and just chill, put the feet up, right? And make myself a meal if I want to, make some oatmeal or a pasta dish. I just do whatever I want back there, just like it's home. And I'm here in Walmart at the moment. Uh, Walmart has become my primary um, place to camp out, right? And some people have a lot of questions about Walmart as well. So did I, so did I. Let me run it back. Before I started sleeping in Walmart consistently, uh, before I ever slept in Walmart at all, what I was doing was I started calling the Walmarts and speaking to people and saying, hey, do you guys allow car camping? And 98% of them said, no, we don't allow car camping. Click. I'm like, damn, where the hell am I going to sleep? Except for one Walmart. I called up one Walmart and I spoke to a guy. And this guy sounded like the dude from the Big Lebowski. He's like, yeah, man, you can just camp out there and, you know, just don't uh, draw any attention to yourself. And there's actually people out there who who have been camping here for years. You know, go ahead and give it a shot. And I was I, that's all I needed to hear. That one person, that one Walmart employee that said, yeah, just give it a shot. And I did. And everything went so smoothly, right? And of course, there's some there's some noises, like people playing loud music, people yelling in the parking lot, you know what I mean? Traffic going by, this, that, and the other. Those sounds become background noise after a while. And I just, it's not even a thing. But anyways, I went in and I tried and I slept. And I did it again. And I did it again. And I said, you know what? I'm getting pretty good at this stealth thing. You know, let me let me try it at a different Walmart. So I did. 
And we're talking like signs being posted that say no overnight camping. And it seems like protocol for the employees to say, no, we don't allow car camping or to put up the signs that say we don't allow overnight parking, right? It's like, it seems to me that it's protocol, right? And it, it must be in the state of Rhode Island and in the state of Massachusetts. Those are the only two states that I have experience with car camping at, at a Walmart. And I can tell you hundreds, hundreds upon hundreds of times I've slept in different Walmarts. I've only received a knock on the window one time, guys, one time at a Walmart parking lot. It turned out to be another car lifer uh, or, you know, just another car camper. And it wasn't a big deal. But anyways, yeah, so I just started becoming really good at car camping and putting up my window covers, practicing full on stealth, not drawing any attention to myself, not making noises, not loitering or littering. You know what I mean? Just, just being, just, doing what I do, just come here and get some sleep. And other people have concerns. They ask me questions, Bren, don't people recognize that you're sleeping in your car? And the answer is yes, I'm sure. Many people have looked over and, and at, at my car and saw that there was window covers, or maybe there was a time when they saw me set up or something like that. But, you know, here's the thing about that. I used to be concerned with what other people thought of me sleeping in, in my car until I came to this realization. People who are shopping at Walmart, they just wanna go about their business, right? They may notice somebody in their car camping or something like that, but 99.9% but .9 of them just don't care about what we have going on. As long as we're not drawing attention to ourselves in, in, in a crazy kind of way. Do you know what I'm saying? So I started just adapting that mentality that these people, just, they, they're just going about their day, you know? And I'm living by faith a lot of the time because a lot of people will say, well, Bren, what if someone breaks into your car? You know what I mean? While you're sleeping in there. Hey, look, if that happened, that would be awful. That would be tragic if somebody was to break into my car and, and crush my skull with a freaking cinder block, right? Yeah, it would be tragic, you know, but it would also be tragic if you went out or I went out onto the interstate one day and we got into a freaking five car pileup on the highway or we if it would be tragic if we got rear-ended it would be tragic if if you know if we were involved in a mass shooting you know what i'm saying like it these things are just out of our control and to live every single day in fear of of this happening would be no way to live at all so i kind of just put my faith in god now now especially that i actually do have a relationship with god i just I just offer it up to God and, and, you know, what will be, will be, right? What will be, will be, but I'm, I'm not going to live in fear. I'm not going to live in fear. I'm going to do my best to stay stealth and not draw any attention to myself and just mind my own business. And, you know, I just have to hope for the best. You know what I mean? But these are the mentalities that I've developed over the past two years, right? And um, like I said before, you just never really fully prepared for uh, car life until you actually start living it, right? And uh, I'm still learning little things, but I've got it locked in. I got it dialed in, man. And and I really do enjoy living in, in, in my car, I must say, even with the challenges, right? I'm happy with where I'm at at this point in my life because I know that I am progressing towards where I want to be, right? Because I do eventually want to be in a better financial position to get a small place for myself and for my son, you know, who, who's a teenager, you know what I mean? And, and uh, get another few years with him under the same roof with him. That's what I really want, right? But until then, this is what I've got. What's most important to me is that I'm sober, is that I'm healthy, and that I'm working hard. And that, you know, I've, I've, just, I've just pretty much put my faith in God that, that if I do the right things every day and stay sober and work hard and do all that, he's gonna guide me and he's gonna take me there, right? So I'm okay with where I'm at, and you will be too. You know, just, just have some faith in yourself, and also just do your research. Know where you're camping, right? Someone asked me recently, it's like, Brand, how do you know where to camp when you're in a new city? And for me, I would just get a feel for the place. I would aim towards the suburbs as opposed to like inner city areas. Are you in a rough area or not? You know, use your common sense. 
pick a place that just feels safe, all right? And, and uh, do your research. So I just know my area. I know all the places to go in Rhode Island and Massachusetts. I know where not to sleep and I know where to sleep. So if I was to like travel into Connecticut or Vermont or somewhere else in New England or down south or you know hit hit the other states, I wouldn't be as um, knowledgeable obviously because I I've never camped out there and I would have to kind of just do my research online maybe and say and and look up you know this area or just kind of get a feel for the area when when I'm down there you know so I don't travel the country I'm I'm pretty much in. The Rhode Island, Massachusetts area. But anyways, I'm gonna stop talking now. I just wanted to talk to you guys about where I was two years ago and where I'm at now, right? And the things I've learned along the way. Everything will be all good if you take care of yourself, y'all. Okay, so thanks for watching. I appreciate you guys. I'll see you on the next one.